Um, let's talk some more about um, fasting and feasting. And of course, you have the quest for this week. Uh, it's a pretty bold quest. It's to have people uh, fast for a day. Yeah. So, um, but you, you, you pointed out that the book actually opens with feasting. Uh, and, and then there's fasting. The King's, the king's Feast and the Queen's Feast. And, mm -hmm. that, um, and that kind of feast that they were uh, doing um, uh, can lend itself to something pretty bad. I'm to throw a party. And, and who, poor Queen Vashti, who, who wants to be a woman coming into a room, room full of a bunch of drunk, leering guys? And I, I think that it's interesting that often when we uh, take steps towards sin and we indulge ourselves, that, it, that really the consequences of, of those sin um, lead us in a direction that we had no, not never intended. And they're, they're usually much bigger than what we think they are. And um, really, they're steps away from God. If we pick it up in Esther 9, um, we have the celebration of Purim for the very first time in history. And uh, let's pick it up in uh, 9, uh, verse 20. Mordecai recorded these events, and he sent letters to all the Jews throughout the provinces of King Xerxes, near and far, to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th day of the month of Adar as the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. He wrote them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. It's a really neat kind of conclusion of the kind of feasting that you can do in the kingdom of God. Okay. So there's, kind of worldly feasting where people are degrading themselves, objectifying women, putting people in awkward positions, risking your own succession or the, the fruit of your own life. Yeah. And, oh, you know, I was thinking about this earlier, making women objects. It, that's that uh, one of the things that you've that I have seen sometimes through the even the women's movement is objectifying men. And hmm. really, I don't think it, um, objectifying any one person or any of uh, the opposite sex is not the intent. It really is not a good thing. And um, we shouldn't copy that kind of behavior um, as women that are seeking for equal rights. Uh, any, any subdued people group has to deal with uh, how to get free. And so what I hear you saying is uh, you can't, if you're objectifying men, Men are all the same. Men are all power hungry. Uh, men have no depth. There's, there's making men the enemy, that it's yeah. going to be us or them. Right. And, and uh, we're actually meant to be partners in yeah. this whole thing of life. And um, I, I like that Esther listens to her uncle, um, both in both um, uh, concealing her uh, nationality in the beginning and then standing up for her people. And um, to me, there's an element of trust and that's what, where we need, we need to have the trust of, of the Lord and the trust in, in one another um, uh, to walk hand in hand towards mm -hmm. uh, more of this kind of equality. It seems like you have to know that there's a, a God behind the scenes who will bring justice and fairness but uh, there are times to speak up, but uh, making the other camp the enemy uh, is never, never the way to do it because God wants us unified. The other question is that, you know, Esther is definitely what um, God's people in exile, how they lived and how Esther, she came basically from rags to riches. She came forward uh, as a humble servant of the Lord um, and was used mightily to say to uh, as an instrument to save her people. And uh, you and I uh, can be the same uh, kind of people in our 
particular kingdom, in our particular uh, sphere of reference. We can be people that uh, uh, humbly submit to God and humbly walk with God and stand up for uh, the rights of others and for um, the, the things of God. In some ways, we could you can liken uh, Christians as being people living in exile because mm -hmm. this is not our kingdom. This is just a, a temporary phase. This is just a temporary location. And so as people of exile, we can demonstrate our humility in submitting ourselves to God. And we can see that our we can be used by God in our um, our spheres of influence and um, see our world changed um uh little by little one person at a time and um i don't know I, yeah. i'm pretty excited about that okay that's why i came to longmont to so just see longmont northern colorado changed for mm -hmm. jesus people set free and beautiful yeah to right. find the freedom in christ to to um and to be honored by the lord and loved by god is it okay to celebrate even while people are still not being set free? Or do we have to uh, live somber lives uh, weighed down uh, by the reality of the sadness of the situation? Well, I think we can take our cues from Jesus. I think you see him celebrating. He goes to weddings and he goes to different places. And, uh, it, you know, as recorded in the, in the New Testament. And so, yeah. yeah. First, first miracle. He made, yeah. a, he made a celebration much better by yeah. keeping the wine flowing. So, well, thank you. This has been lovely. And I uh, look forward to walking down the hallway and seeing you in person. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, sweetheart. Bye.